Well, I was going to go out for a walk <laughs> again today, and it's minus 14, and windy, and blistering, and blowing. So I decided I'm going to walk around my kitchen again to get my 10,000 steps in. But oh man, uh, what our premier in Quebec just said is so dumb, it's almost hard to believe. So as many of you know, I've been mentioning that in Quebec, which is only about four kilometers from me uh, across the river, they are in curfew right now. We just hit officially two weeks in curfew. It's set to expire in two weeks plus one day on the 8th of February. More on that later. More on that later. But I reported on the story of that poor man who was kicked out of a homeless shelter because they were forced to close during this curfew and uh, he passed away in a uh, porta potty. He froze to death. And also we have homeless people out there that are being, I <laughs> hope I'm not getting you guys dizzy, being ticketed a thousand dollars for not being in their home during a curfew. A thousand dollars for a homeless person for not being in their home. And when pressure arose after homeless people were getting ticketed and this poor man passed away, the premier came out and said, you know, I think it's, I think it's working very well. Uh, the police are using their discretion. And well, if the police are using their discretion, how is their thousand dollar fines being handed out? Uh, for one thing. Second thing is he, the reason he says he doesn't want to change those restrictions is because, uh, because too many people might then go out and pretend that they're homeless. So instead of coming, this is kind of like the whole problem with the pandemic and the way governments are handling it right now. Instead of trying to come up with a solution for one of, for basically your most vulnerable people, your most vulnerable of your population. Instead of coming up with a solution that is better, uh, you just say, well, no, we're gonna keep it the same because there might be some people out there who pretend. So there's, there's nothing you could possibly have done for those pretenders. Uh, tell you what, police come across somebody who's pretending to be homeless just so they can go outside. By the way, you can't do anything because everything's closed, everything's locked up, you're not going to a bar, you're not going out to do... So going out to pretend that you're homeless uh, is a really pathetic move, for one thing, if you would do that. And if you're a person out there trying to make a point against the lockdown, um, well, how about if the police come up to you and you pretend that you're homeless, you've, you've ripped your shirt, and you've ripped your jeans, and you, you rub some dirt on your face, or whatever you want to pretend, and what you think a homeless person actually looks like. Uh, because you know, the average person out there has never had to step foot in a homeless person's shoes. And what you see on the movies is what the average person actually thinks a lot of time. Well, what about if the police come across this person and they really suspect that they're not really homeless or anything, Take them to a homeless shelter and force them to stay there for a few nights. Force them to spend some time as a homeless person. If the person's actually homeless, then they're in the right place. They're in a warm place. They're in a safer place in the winter of Quebec. If they're not homeless, maybe it'll teach them a pretty darn less good lesson that that's not exactly what you're supposed to do. You don't do this. These people have mental issues. They have addiction issues. There's all, you are not usually homeless by choice, by any kinds of means. And there's often ulterior things that add to it, right? I've been homeless in my life. I've been out on the street. Now I, I haven't lived on the street. I had enough money for the cheap, 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 dirty flea bag hotel for a week. 
before I got another job. And then I found a very cheap shared, shared apartment to live with. But I was that close to being on the street. So, you know, uh, why they can't come up with solutions to help these people in Quebec, I don't know. Uh, what the Premier said to me sounds exactly like some silver-spooned politician that's never had to struggle a day in their life for anything. And it was a pretty, you know, pretty unconscionable choice of words, you know, to say that we're doing good just after a man passed away in a porta potty after freezing to death or that they're getting tickets to homeless people. It really kind of bothered me. But uh, yeah, that's the world we live in right now, folks. And by the way, two weeks into the pandemic uh, curfew, not the pandemic, but the curfew, um, that is already told by the health officials in Quebec who are on the task force of the government have already come out and said, yeah, the curfew really isn't going to do anything. It really doesn't. Uh, there's no scientific basis on it. There's no facts. So they didn't come up with this idea scientifically, which is a real concern. Because if you're telling me to wear a mask and you're telling me that my business has to close and you base it on scientific facts, I, I will go along with it a lot of it most of the time, right? Until it gets ridiculous. If you're telling me I have to stay in my home and locking us in our homes and there's no scientific fact behind it, now you're making things up. And now you're becoming a dictatorship as opposed to a democracy. And that, that is not great. So he came out again and they were talking about, uh, you know, that it, we're, we're two weeks in and it, you know, th this curfew and restrictions, you know, we're only meant to be here a month, but, but, we are going to have to see a huge dramatic drop in cases before he lifts that curfew. You know, the curfew that has no scientific fact, no scientific basis in fact, no proof of anything that your own health officials say isn't doing anything different. In fact, it may be causing worse because people are out shopping all together now in shorter time zones. And it's more restrictive for your police. It's more restrictive for your hospitals. And homeless people are freezing to death on your streets. But yeah, yeah. Keep that curfew in order because once you implement an order that makes no sense and doesn't do anything, what do you do when it's time to renew it? You double down because you can't admit that you're wrong. Because if you admit you were wrong, the other party will come all over you next election. So you're going to keep doing this and keep putting a curfew in for as long as it takes for numbers to go down to almost nothing. And then you can say, see, it was our curfew that worked. We did it right. Doesn't matter if it's the vaccines that did it. Doesn't matter if it's people just staying home that did it. Doesn't matter if it's because all the businesses went bankrupt in your province. Doesn't matter. You'll be able to say, look, my curfew worked. Re-elect me. Since when is a global pandemic now a campaign thing? <sighs> well, there you go. I don't think the curfew's ending in two weeks. They're not going to do anything for the homeless people. I'm walking around in circles in my kitchen, and that's how I feel the world is right now. <laughs>